Toyota is in serious troubles. After about five consecutive months of declines and profit losses, they've finally seen a slight uptick in the market. And while I've a personal owner of a Toyota product, I bought an older school model version because of reputation, but sadly, that reputation seems to be diminishing and it's showing in sales of a lot of these products. While we're starting to finally see a slight uptick, it's clear that some of the scandals of their vehicles, some of the issues they've had with recalls and the declining of a lot of customers and saying no to a lot of recall claims or a lot of issues regarding warranties and Toyota saying no, that doesn't qualify, just means that they're upsetting the Apple cart, a lot of customers cart. A lot of customers are not very happy with Toyota. The quality is changing and while you're hearing consumers reports and other vendors are saying that they're still the best in terms of overall reliability I believe there's a lot of customers out there that beg to differ we've seen a lot of quality challenges a lot of situations with crash testing and of course just overall it's starting to show the sales are down. So Toyota, as well as some of its subsidiaries, Hino, Daihatsu, as well, saw a very small minute in July, a 0.7% increase in overall sales, all the way up to 924,918 units, but that's after five months of absolute decline, degradation, deterioration, flatulence, and falling on their face. They're losing sales at an alarming rate. And a lot of it has to do with the reputation, unfortunately, of the brand. And while, like I said, we bought a Toyota Camry late model because we grabbed on what we believe to be one of the last outgoing, naturally aspirated, simple vehicles with a torque converter auto transmission, Toyota has experimented with other technologies and that's the bone of a contention for a lot of customers. So a lot of these issues are coming from some of the scandals. Number one, a lot of vehicles now, they've actually retired since then, but the crash test results in some cases allegedly were doctored. They put down numbers that weren't necessarily entirely accurate, allegedly, and on top of it, even for example, doing crash testing, they would pre-inflate the airbags prior to the collision, demonstrating a better result than it actually was. We're also seeing in the United States and North American markets, sales were down because a lot of the vehicles were sidelined. The Lexus TX as well as the Grand Highlander had to be put on the shelf because their airbags, when the driver window was down, wouldn't necessarily, de wouldn't necessarily activate and create all kinds of potential impacts could have airbags that do not deploy. Toyota discovered the issue with the certain airbags on the driver's side that may not work. And the Japanese public broadcaster NHK reported that Toyota revised down its annual global production output from 10.3 to 9.8 million units, all because of some of these scandals. And some of these scandals unfortunately result because of initially some of the issues with those new 3.4 turbo V6s that they were putting in the Toyota Tundras, they were replacing the old 5.7 V8s as well. They're putting them in some of the Lexus products. For example, the LX600 has resulted in a, a mass abundance of warranty and recall claims due to the fact that a lot of these engines are catastrophically failing. Part of the issue came with a lot of customers were pushed back and initially a lot of customers said, hey, this engine's blowing, that engine's blowing and Toyota just sort of shrugged it off initially. But now as time goes on, it took some time. Now we're starting to see finally the acceptance that there is issues. Oil pumps undersized, metal particulate floating around in the case. All were potential contributing factors to premature bearing, main bearing failure within the bottom end of the engine, resulting in a mass amount of that 3.4 liter twin turbo V6 engine failures. There's also been customers not entirely satisfied with that newly revised 2.4 turbo four that was now replacing some of their V6s. And now on top of it, the worst thing is some of these new Corolla GR hot rods that are known to carry a pretty highly strong engine. Customers, two of them now precisely, are saying that they've actually had to go and claim warranty after their cars have burned. One of them burned more or less roadside, partially was somewhat refixed, and the other one burned entirely to the ground. So it sounds a lot like there's some engine issues, some challenges all the way around, and a lot of those came because of what a lot of customers are alleging turbocharged technology is not accustomed to long-term long durability and Toyota knew what they had and Toyota knew what they had when they had reliable, durable, long-lasting, naturally aspirated engines and now this transformation and transition into turbocharging 
is just what the doctor didn't order. And now, unfortunately, Toyota is going through some real rough spells. At the expense of some of the reputation, customers are not satisfied. They're not happy with this. And me, along with many other millions of people, start to recognize the writing on the wall. Toyota isn't, in my opinion, the reputable manufacturer what they once were. And while they do always rank very highly, and is Toyota more or less unreliable than a product from Stellantis? Well, of course, if you're a betting person, you're going to still go with Toyota. You're probably going to go with the Hondas too. But they also had issues on the Honda side with the Turbo 1.5 that had oil and fuel dilution issues. So all of these manufacturers, while experimenting with new technology, with variable valve timing, direct injected, now, of course, turbocharging is introducing a whole new gamut of challenges for these manufacturers. And customers are tired of being the guinea pigs for all of these manufacturers. While a lot of people want to see new technology and innovation, we don't want it to be at the expense of the customer's wallet and the pocketbook. And that's what's starting to happen. We're starting to see sales decline. We're starting to see stiff competition. People never considered Mazda to be the direct competition to Toyota. But guess what? Mazda's up and coming and they're producing a lot of very reliable vehicles that are lasting a long time with or without turbocharging. So Toyota is facing a very stiff headwind and that's what's going on right now. Customers are not sure anymore. It used to be the obvious. You want a reliable, you want Toyota. You want fast, you go Porsche. But now you can't make up your mind sometimes if you want reliable, fast. It's not that clear anymore. Now you have to start looking somewhere else and customers are making some of these decisions. Sales are starting to show. Sales are on the decline. And now because of some of these failures where they're pushing back on customers on warranty claims, it's not leaving people with a good taste in their mouth. And as a result, Toyota has some serious challenges in the front of them. Big stiff competition and the likes of manufacturers like BYD and even with Canada imposing 100% tariffs on a lot of these Chinese imports, even with that tariff applied, there still begs the question. The prices still might be more competitive than what you're getting with the ever-increased price increases from we're seeing from Toyota and Honda and every other manufacturer in the place that it does beg the question, can they survive in this market with scandals, challenges with technology, challenges with engine failures, and of course, a new leadership group does beg the question, is this the company that I want to invest my money in? Well, I'd like to hear your thoughts down below. I mean, we bought a Toyota because we got what was kind of the new old stock, the older variations before this major transformation. Would I, in fact, buy one of the newest and latest and greatest? I'm going to have to wait for a few years, to be honest, to be see all these bugs and you know, all these issues kind of work their way out of the system before I built that confidence back into the brand that I can honestly say, yes, that is the most reliable brand. Because right now, me personally, as a Toyota consumer, I'm not so sure. So definitely like to hear your comments on that. And right there, classic examples, right there where I share some of the issues that Toyota is going through in great detail. You're going to want to see that. Hope to see each and every one in the next one. See you real soon. Bye-bye.